In this video, you're going to learn how to graph rows curves easily. And we're going to go through three examples together. So let's dive in. So the first thing you want to do is recognize when you're dealing with a rows curve. And that's when the equation is in this form, r equals a times cosine n theta, or r equals a times sine n theta. And the a, this coefficient that comes in front of the cosine or the sine, will tell you how long the petals are of the flower. And the number that comes in front of the angle theta will tell you how many petals that you have. Now, if n is an odd number like 3, 5, 7, that's exactly how many petals that you'll have, 3, 5, or 7. But if it's an even number greater than or equal to 2, so for example, 2 theta, 4 theta, 6 theta, you'll actually have twice the number of petals. So you'd have, you know, if it was 2, you'd have 4 petals. If it's 4, you'd have 8 petals. If it's 6, you'd have 12 petals. And those petals are going to be evenly distributed or spaced around uh, the graph. Okay, let's dive into an example. I want to show you how to make this a lot easier. So if we were graphing r equals 2 sine 2 theta, we know there's going to be 2 times 2, 4 petals, because this is an even number, so it's double the number of petals. The length of the petals are going to be too long. But what I like to do is I like to think about graphing the graph y equals 2 sine 2x. So what I'm doing is I'm graphing it in the Cartesian plane, the xy plane, and we're going to use that as a guide to graph it as a polar graph, okay, in this polar form here. So we know that this would be like our amplitude of 2. We know it's a sine graph. We know the period is equal to 2 pi divided by this b value, which gives us a period of pi. Now what I like to do is I like to divide it up into four equal pieces, okay? So this would be like pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4. And we can keep going. This would here be 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, 8 pi over 4, which is 2 pi. Now, when we graph the sine, it starts at the midline. It goes up to the maximum, back to the midline, down to the minimum, back to the midline, maximum, midline, uh, minimum, and midline. So that gives us a couple of cycles or periods of our graph from 0 to 2 pi, or once around, like so. Now, we can use this because we can say, all right, when my angle now, okay, instead of x, let's think of this as our angle theta, when we're at 0, the r value, or the distance from the pole, is going to be 0. So we're going to be right here, okay, like at our pole, or something you can think of as the origin. But as we make our way to pi over 4, Okay, this angle right here, pi over 4, you can see the r value is getting longer or larger until it reaches a maximum of 2. So what that tells us is that as I'm turning, the r value is getting longer and longer until it reaches a maximum distance from the pole of 1, 2. Okay, now as I'm going from pi over 4 to pi over 2, so from 45 to 90, okay, turning like that, you can see the r value is getting smaller until it reaches zero again. So as I rotate, it's like I'm pulling that r value back in, okay, almost like a magnet or like a fishing rod, you're reeling it back in. So you're turning, but at the same time that this distance is getting shorter, okay, and it goes to the pole. Okay, that's what's referred to as our zeros, okay, so where it crosses the x-axis here. And then these places where the graph bends, this is where the absolute value of r is a maximum, meaning where it's the furthest from the pole. So you can see that's occurring at these points here. So now we're at pi over 2. Now notice here we're going below the x-axis. That means we have a negative r value. Now what happens when you have a negative r value? Well, what you have to do is you have to go through the pole to the other side. What I mean by that is, is as I'm going from 90 to 135, or pi over 2 to 3 pi over 4, my r value is going from 0 to negative 2. So what's happening is, as I'm rotating here, instead of going out to 2, I'm going to be going out to the other direction. So through the pole, out to 2 this way. So you can see this is actually going to go, instead of this way, I'm actually going to be going through the pole out to negative 2 like that. Now as I make my way from 3 pi over 4 to pi, that r value is getting smaller. See how it's approaching 0 until when we reach pi, we're back to the pole at 0. So I'm turning like this, but because I still have that negative r value, I have to go through the pole to the other side. So this is pulling it back in 
towards the origin, or it's the, called the pole in polar form. Now, as we make our way from pi to five pi over four, you can see this is above the x-axis. That means we have a positive r value. We're gonna go in the same direction, okay? So what's happening is as I go from pi to five pi over four, this r value is getting longer, longer, longer until it reaches two from the pole. So again, what you're doing here is it's like you're spiraling out, so you're turning, but the R value is getting longer until it reaches this maximum here at two from the pole at five pi over four. Now, as you make your way from five pi over four to three pi over two, see that R value is getting smaller until it reaches zero. So I'm turning, okay, so from here to here I'm turning, but the R value, again, we're, we're reeling it in, or it's like this magnetic field kind of like pulling it back in towards the pole, okay? And then as we go from three pi over two to seven pi over four, notice that this R value is negative again. This is the tricky part for students because what would happen is, okay, three pi over two to seven pi over four, that's right here, over here in the fourth quadrant, right? But as the R value is getting a larger and larger negative number until it reaches negative two, I don't wanna be here at two, I wanna go through the pole to here. So what that's ha what's happening here is, so I've, I'm already here, I'm, the R value is getting longer, but I'm going through the pole to the opposite side. And then it, lastly, as we go from seven pi over four to two pi, seven pi over four to two pi, the R value is still negative, which means that I'm gonna be diagonally across here, okay, through the pole to the opposite side, but it's getting smaller, it's approaching zero. So as I rotate like this to two pi, this R value going through the pole is getting shorter, 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 and that's it. Now, once we've gotten to two pi, we've made our way around and we've completed our, our rose curve. Now, I could have rounded this out a little bit better, but you can see there's four petals, which is double the two here, okay, because it was even. The length of the petals, they're out a radius of two, and you got it. So a nice way to do this is to start by graphing in the Cartesian plane, and then you can transfer it to here. So let's look at another example now where n is odd, and let's do that next. Okay, for example number two now, let's graph r equals four sine three theta. So what you'll notice is that the a value is four, that's how long the petals are, they're four units long. And the three is an odd coefficient here in front of the theta, the angle. That tells us that we're gonna have exactly three petals. Remember when it's odd, you get the same number of petals. If it's even, you have to double it. So in this case, and I'll show you why that is in a minute. So here we're gonna graph, just to kind of help us, we're gonna graph the graph y equals four sine of three x. Okay, so we can graph it in the Cartesian plane. And we know that our period is equal to two pi divided by this b value, this coefficient in front of the angle. So that means it completes one cycle or one period in two pi over three. Now you, you learned how to graph these uh, graphs earlier in uh, algebra two and earlier in pre-calculus, but you can divide this up into four pieces, two pi divided by three uh, times one fourth is two pi over 12, which is, um, let's see, let's cut this in half. So this would be pi over three. And if I cut it in half again, this would be pi over six. So basically you wanna get one fourth of the period and divide it up, that's your scale. So pi over six, two pi over six, three pi over six, which is pi over two, four pi over six. Now if I continue, this would be five pi over six, uh, six pi over six, which is pi, seven pi over six, eight pi over six, which is four pi over three, uh, nine pi over six, which is three pi over two, uh, 10 pi over six, which is five pi over three, 11 pi over six, and um, 12 pi over six, which is two pi. So we've made our way around uh, two pi. Now remember with the sine graph, okay, it starts at the midline, makes its way up to the maximum here at four, back to the midline, down to the minimum at four, back to the midline, maximum, midline, just keep repeating that process, minimum, midline, uh, maximum, uh, midline, minimum, midline. Okay, so that's our basic graph of our sine graph in the Cartesian plane. And again, we're just gonna use this as a guide to help us to graph it on our polar graph here. So let's do that. So starting at zero degrees or zero radians, uh, we're at an R value of zero. So we're starting right here at the pole, okay? But as they make way, way out to pi over six, now pi over six is like a 30 degree angle, I'm gonna reach a maximum R value of four. So basically at this angle here, pi over six, 
okay? We're out here at four, but again, remember what's happening is you're turning and you're getting further out. So what happens is I kind of think of this as like spiraling out, okay? So you're turning and you're going further away. But then as we make our way from pi over six to pi over three, which pi over three is roughly on this line here, your the R value is getting smaller, smaller, smaller until it gets to zero. So what you're doing again is you're like reeling it back in, pulling it back in, kind of like, like that. Okay. And then now as you make your way from pi over three to pi over two, which is from 60 to 90, Notice that now you're below the x-axis, so the R value is negative, which means we have to go through the pole to the other side. So we're going out to four, but instead of at pi over two being four here, we're going to through the pole to the other side. So you're gonna end up right here. So what's happening is instead of going out this way, I'm actually going out like this. Okay, so you're going through the, through the pole to the other side. Okay, so now at pi over two to two pi over three, pi over two to two pi over three, which is like right about on this line here. Okay, so as I'm rotating here, notice this is still a negative R value, but it's getting smaller, it's approaching the pole. So instead of being uh, at, for, on this side here from pi over two to two pi over three, we have to go through the pole to the other side and that R value is getting smaller, so it's pulling it in to the pole like so. Now at two pi over three, to five pi over six, which five pi over six is kind of on a line like right about there. So this way, now notice the R value is positive. So we're going out to an R value of four at five pi over six. So this is gonna be, as you're turning, R is getting longer, okay, and you're rotating. So as you do this more and more, it's gonna get faster, but I'm just kind of showing you all the little details. So as you go from five pi over six to pi, so five pi over six to pi, 180, Notice that this R value is getting smaller until it goes back to the pole. So again, you're reeling it in. It's getting shorter as you're turning. This is gonna go right to here. Now you might be saying, Mario, there's our three pedals, right? And it's three, three pedals, we're done. But we're only at pi. We haven't made our way all the way around to two pi. But watch what happens. As I make my way from pi to seven pi over six, so that's here to here, the R value is going negative on us, right? to a negative four. So basically, as I go from here to here, I'm going, th instead of out to here, I'm going through the pole to the other side. So what happens is, I start tracing the same rose curve a second time. So that's why you only get three pedals instead of six pedals, because again, you're just, as you make your way from pi to two pi, you go through the same, uh, like basically tracing it again over itself. When it's uh, even, it doesn't overlap like that, so you're not tracing those pedals, so that's why you end up getting you know, twice as many pedals. Here you, don't, you get the same number of pedals because you're, you're tracing it again. So I hope that's clear. Let's do another example using a cosine instead of a sine. Okay, I challenge you to try this last example, number three, on your own, and we'll go through it together, but just pause the video, see if you can do it, and, and just kind of walk through it. And while you're doing that, I wanted to let you know that usually this is covered near the end of like a pre-calculus course when you start to get into polar equations, polar graphs, etc. If you want help with a pre-calculus final exam review or even the midterm exam review, you can check out um, by joining as, an, uh, <laughs> joining as a member at the additional videos level, you can get access to those midterm and final exam reviews uh, for pre-calculus. So check that out if that's something you're interested in. Now, number three, I would again think about this as y equals three times the cosine of two x. That's what we're gonna graph here in the Cartesian plane and then use it as a guide to graph it as a polar graph. We know that our period is two pi divided by this b value two. That means we have a period of pi. So here's our period of pi. We divide it up into four you know, fourths. So one fourth of pi is pi over four. That's our scale. Two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, 8 pi over 4, which is 2 pi. That's one revolution. Our amplitude is 3, and we know that our cosine graph starts at the maximum. So maximum, 0, minimum, 0, maximum, 0, minimum, 0, maximum. So roughly, 
our graph should look something like that. But now we're going to use this as a guide uh, to graph it in, as a polar graph. So we'd say when it, we're at an angle of zero, the R value is three. So that means we're three units out, like a radius of three from the pole at zero degrees or zero radians. But as we make our way to pi over four, which is on this line right here, okay, we are now, the R value is getting smaller and smaller. We're reeling it in, we're pulling it back in. So as we turn, it's getting closer and closer to the pole. So it looks something like, like that, okay? Now as we make our way from pi over four to pi over two, so from 45 to 90, our R value is going negative on us, right? So it's actually, instead of being out this way, at three, uh, negative three means we're gonna go th through the pole to negative three down here. So this way, instead of going out here, we're going through, and as we're rotating, our graph's gonna look something like this, roughly, okay? As we go from 90 to 135, or pi over two to three pi over four, which is right here, okay, so as we're turning like that, the R value is still negative, but it's becoming smaller, smaller, smaller. It's going towards zero. So as I'm going here, I'm going through the pole, okay? And it's again, reeling it back in. R value is getting smaller and smaller. It's going to zero. Now, as I go from three pi over four to pi, so 135 to 180, the R value is going positive until we reach a maximum of three here. So that's one, two, three. So right here, three at pi, but you can see this is, Again, spiraling out. It's, R value is getting longer as you're turning. It kind of goes like that. And then as we go from pi to five pi over four, which is right here, okay, you can see the R value is getting smaller, getting closer to zero. At five pi over four, it's back to zero. So this is kind of reeling it back in, okay. And then five pi over four to three pi over two. So from here to here, R value is going negative on us. So that when we get to three pi over two, we go through the pole over here to three. So basically this graph is going like this. And then lastly from three pi, well actually not quite lastly, but from three pi over two to seven pi over four, where's that? Three pi over two to seven pi over four here, you can see we're going back to an R value of zero. But notice the R value is still negative, it's just becoming smaller and smaller. So again, from here to here, we're not in this direction, we're through the bowl on the other side, but the R value is getting smaller. Okay, so it's reeling it back in. And then lastly, from seven pi over four to two pi, that's from here to here, the R value is positive. Okay, so it's getting longer and longer as you go from seven pi over four to two pi. So what's happening is you're spiraling out, okay, as you're turning, so it's getting longer. And then now we've gone two pi, we've completed one full revolution here, and notice we have one, two, three, four petals. Double what we have here. Remember, and this is even, it's double the number of petals. Two times two is four petals. And one thing I didn't really mention or touch on was the symmetry. So remember, when you're working with cosine graphs, you know if it's just everything is in terms of cosine, it's gonna be a reflection over the polar axis or this x-axis. If it's a sine graph, we know it's gonna have symmetry about the line theta equals pi over two, this line right here. Now it can have additional symmetry and there's other tests that you can do and I, I talk about that in some other videos. That's just kind of a guide. But the main thing here was how to graph these rose curves quickly and easily. And then the key is really drawing it in the Cartesian plane first. So I hope that helps. I look forward to seeing you um, in some of my other videos. I'll put a link to a video right there talking about Lima Soons if you wanna learn about some other types of polar graphs you're gonna to wanna to know. I'll see you there.